One thing that is really messy in our game right now is the amount of fireballs that we are shooting. Um, if I'm running the game and I'm shooting a lot of fireballs, uh, you will notice that all the fireballs get added up in our um, hierarchy panel right here, and you know they they keep on living forever even when they fall off the platform. They they um, they keep on creating and if you have a couple of worms that we will have later in your level uh, and they'll all be shooting then there's a, there'll be hundreds of thousands of fireballs which could seriously slow down your game so uh, to fix this we need to um, basically destroy the fireball over time uh, to do that let's create a new script just right click somewhere in your project panel and hit create and then JavaScript then um, open the script up and this script we will attach uh, to our f uh, to our fireball prefab um, and it will automatically destroy itself after a couple seconds so um, let's get rid of the update function here because instead of the update function we want to use a different function this is also a predefined one in um, unity and we'll call this function uh, um, awake now this is a predefined um, thing so as soon as we create our prefab or our game object in script the awake function is triggered um, when it uh, when it's created so um, we can um, kill our object in here over time now here simply type destroy which is also an engine specific function it will tell unity to destroy the game object the script is attached to and then just type uh, game object which refers to um, where the script is attached to and then we could set a variable and call it lifetime and this is the time in seconds that uh, the fireball has to live so let's um, this variable is not defined yet so let's make it here type var lifetime and then um, let's start out with a default of one second so 1.0 and then close it okay um, let's save the script right now it's called new behavior script.js we want to make that name a little bit um, cooler so let's change it into um, kill me over time alright then next thing what we need to do is attach this script to our fireball just click the fireball prefab then drag the kill me over time right on top of it until you see the plus icon let go and you see it will add the script right here and down here we have the variable lifetime uh, that we can set to um, what it's currently set to one second but we could also change it um, if, if we want now let's run our game and we'll see that when we shoot the fireballs are gone at some point in time exactly one second after they were created now if you want to change that just change this variable here and just you know change it to two seconds or 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 three or four whatever you like hit play and you will see that now they will live a little longer but still it cleans it up now your hierarchy is nice because all the fireball that you, fireballs you have created are um, are um, you know um, killed over time a lot of people have asked hey um, can you explain more scripting I want to know more about scripting because apparently scripting is the hardest part of game design um, but it gets a lot easier when I explain a couple of very simple concepts and as soon as you grasp those scripting gets a lot easier okay remember this from math math class that whenever your teacher wanted you to do something he would draw this an X and an Y axis um, on a grid and you were supposed to make formulas out of that and, and stuff like that well uh, this is school and school is boring so let's make it more interesting and add a third one and call it Z and now all of a sudden we have game design okay whenever you um, in math class needed to define a point in 3d you would go X is so much and Y is so much and you would write it down like this X comma Y okay now since we are in 3d we also have the third axis which is a Z so let's add a Z to that and this is what Unity calls a vector3 variable. Okay? Um, vector3 makes sense because there's three axes, there's three vectors. And um, if you write these numbers in order of x, y, and z, then all of a sudden you have a vector3. Okay, let me explain this. Um, 
Just think for a second that our rubber ducky here, don't laugh, R rubber duckies are awesome, okay? Let's think for a second that our rubber ducky here is a game object in our Unity game engine. Now, um, just remember, whenever you get lost in 3D space and you kind of like lost track, think of this school example, Y is always up. X is always horizontal and Z always looks forward. So if we're looking at our character, our character's up is always Y and our character's forward, what he's facing is always Z. Okay? Now here's the tricky part. As soon as this um, ducky wants to move around, for example, he's looking up and he's looking like this, his Y axis angles this way. So now all of a sudden Y is not up anymore but is diagonal. So if you want to move your ducky up in script, all of a sudden he's going this way and not the up that you expected. So here's the catch. Let me explain that real quick to you. Um, what I just drew was the X, Y, and Z axis of our rubber ducky, but these are um, what Unity calls local, the local vector 3. And local means it's, it's bound to this object. But also there is a world, X, Y, and Z, which is bigger and um, it, that has to do with the entire 3D space. So Unity makes a difference between local uh, axes and global axes. And global, um, these always stay the same because it has to do with the world. So if, you, if your character is looking up like this and your Y is diagonal, but you really want to move your character up along the world axis, then all you have to do in script is use world axis instead of local axis. Now let's get back to Unity and let me show you how that works in the interface. Now what does that mean for our game? Well the answer is pretty easy. If you look at our character right here, then in the world as well as uh, in his local axis, he's facing into the Z direction. Uh, you can double check by looking up here and you can see the world uh, is, uh, the Z is facing this way. So he is also facing in that right direction. So if I rotate him, um, around making him look uh, a different direction you can see that this rotate tool rotates with him uh, because right now all the tools in unity are set to local uh, but if you see the button up here as soon as I toggle this to global watch what happens with the rotate tool boom it aligns back to the world axis same with the move tool you can see right now it is um, not really facing in the direction of the worm because it's set to the global axis but as soon as I click it again, you can see now it's local, global, local, and global. Okay? So it gets even more interesting when we look at our script uh, because there's some piece of script that I have just told you to copy and paste in part two, but I have not explained it yet because it was too complicated back then. But now that you understand vector threes, let me show you how this works. Open up our move around script, and you can see there's a part, some parts that I haven't explained yet. Um, First is the rotate function. The rotate function sends, sends a vector 3 uh, to the engine. So you can see x, y, and z. And we're not doing anything with x and y, or x and z, but only with y. Because remember, y is the up axis. So if you rotate around, you look around in the world. And it basically sends the input of our horizontal axis, which is our left and right keys. And it multiplies it by the speed that we want to rotate our character. Next, it defines a forward variable, and this one's very interesting because it looks at the transform or the vector three of our character, and then it it um, it calls the transform direction uh, function, which transforms the direction of our character from local to world vector threes to globals, um, and it's looking at it only wants us to return the forward direction because we want our character to move forward, multiplied by our speed and our speed basically looks at our um, up and down keys multiplied by how fast we want to move so ev eventually it takes these two variables and it multiplies it you know our forward direction times our current speed uh, and it sends it to the simple move and this is what moves our character around so a lot easier if you think of it this way but it would have been hard to explain that right at the beginning now don't go yet we have a little surprise here uh, my new friend from Sweden has uh, taken this worm uh, game to the next level and he added some split screen action and uh, some real fire and you know explosion effects and he's um, giving our his code available for free so click the link underneath the subscription button uh, to go to my blog and download it and don't forget to visit his YouTube channel to, to say thank you um, for sharing your code with us